What's going on guys, Joe from SRHQ. I wanted to pop on and give an update on my humpback camp knife collection, uh, if you will. The six bladed utility knife, minus a couple, you know, this is the Vincer Messer, which I wanted to make a quick correction on this one. The last time I showed this one, I mentioned that it was probably the same cover material as the Beer Barrel series. Uh, I have later found out, you know, some people graciously told me that this, this is, of course, is from red wine barrels. So very similar in looks, you know, the same kind of theme, but this is not the same as the beer barrel uh, covers. These are red wine barrels. So just a quick little um, correction on that one. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these knives. I do have a couple new ones that I've never shown on the channel before, and I just want to show them. But first, I want to talk about this one. Every single time I've shown this one, um, I've said the shield means something else. I, I, I can never figure out what the hell uh, the actual shield meant. But I'm pretty satisfied with what I've come up with now. Um, this turns out to be the Bergische Luva, or the Lion of Berg. Now, the region that Solingen in, is in, historically, you know, going back to, you know, 1100, 1200, uh, was known as Berg. The, the area was known as Berg, and this region also included Cologne and Dusseldorf. Um, but in that region, uh, they had a, yeah, coat of arms with this, you know, this mythical creature, this Bergische Luva. I have a description of him. I'll read it. It says, he sticks his tongue out to everyone and his tail is split in two. The paws raised for a boxing match and one leg is kicked. Can't vigorously is the last word. Leg is kicked vigorously. So yeah, I will add some pictures in so you guys can check out with the Bergische Luva. Luva means lion, so it's the the Bergische lion. So Berg is the name of the area, the region. Someone from there would be Bergish. So yeah, I'm really happy that that is finally solved. Take a look at the tang stamps. According to the tang stamp chart in Neil Puncture and Ricky Ray's book, you know, this one is 1932 to 1950. Um, I don't know, or around the 1950s, I believe it said, I don't know anything else about this. This seems to me like it would have been a special knife, you know, with this, this special shield with the Bergische Luva on it. But other than that, I can't tell you guys anything about it. It's in jig bone. It's in really bad shape. As you can see, this was used and abused. So what else do I have? I recently got this one. This one's a really cool one. This one is a shadow pattern. Wood covered shadow pattern with a brass tree shield, which is very cool. They don't typically use brass. I have one other brass shield and that's the 150th anniversary. So that makes me think that, you know, that just because this one is a shadow pattern and, you know, wooden, which I don't know which kind of wood this is. I'll give you a look at the grain, very straight, almost parallel lines, very dark wood. Could be ebony. I honestly don't know if I've ever seen ebony like that. But yeah, I think this one was probably a special edition. You can see I'm missing the back layer tools here. It came, um, this is just barely being held together with, you know, homemade rivets out of nails. Whoever had this knife before me just kind of put it together. I can't be honestly certain if these blades belong to this knife. You see that? One of the pins just fell out. Yeah. So I got to keep this one together, but I'll give you a shot of the hang stamp, H. Boker & Co. Zollingen. Yeah, I, I also don't know much about this one. I, this is the only wooden shadow pattern that I've ever seen, and especially with the brass shield, it definitely looks like a, you know, a special knife. I just don't know a lot about it. I just thought I would give you guys a look at it. We've seen this one before. This is my last, this one's pre-World War II. This one I would say is also pre-World War II. 
This one's really cool because it's got the 182 etching still intact. There's our tank stamp. Yeah, so what's new um, around here? Of course, the Vincer Messer is new. Of course, this isn't a sport messer, but this has three blades, corkscrew, spear point blade, and then bottle opener screwdriver. Really handsome knife. It does not have a bail, and I can honestly say it's actually nice in use without that bail. Sometimes the bail on these being on the top gets in the way a little bit. Um, I've shown this one before, but I think this is worth showing again. This is a either Delstone or Delstona. Zolian. This is the only example of the humpback camp knife with from this company that I've ever seen. I don't know anything about Delstona, but I can say as far as the fit and finish and the quality and the craftsmanship, it's probably the best one on the table. And that's saying a lot. So maybe I will do a separate video on this one, but I really do enjoy this one. And also I just recently got a couple of Remingtons. I have yet to have a Remington trail hand and I was on eBay not too long ago and these this one came from the US eBay this is a 1996 new old stock Remington trail hand and if you guys want a pro tip there are quite a few other ones of these still currently on eBay they are brand new inbox I don't know anything about them other than there's quite a few of them online so yeah this one is I didn't know what to expect um, it's thicker than the bokers you can see they use like double brass liners and double springs and then this jig Delrin pretty thick slabs of it I mean it just makes for a thick knife you can see the blade stocks in there this one has an old style can opener. The jaw looks very narrow to me. And I've heard, um, well, I haven't heard, I've seen that, you know, on the original trail hands from the 20s and 30s was a two piece can opener. Big, strong cap lifter screwdriver. Yeah, then we move on to this one. This is a Remington Bandit. Don't know too much about this one. Uh, I, I know that it, they came out in the 90s. This was part of a five knife set that you could get in these black composition handles with this, you know, this gold Bandit logo. Looks like the B is behind a golden sun. Uh, they also had a single bladed peanut, a single bladed trapper. A two-bladed Barlow that did not have a bolster. It was just a shadow pattern. Uh, a four-bladed camp as well as this, the six-bladed camp. And this is also another rare one. I've only seen a couple of other examples of this one. And this one's brand new. I was able to find a packaging, a picture of packaging on the internet. And, you know, I was able to find out that these were 440A stainless steel, which I wonder if these were 440A as well. Both of these would have been made by Camillus. Yeah, just a really cool knife. Um, you can see the setup is a little bit different because this has the old style can opener and the Bandit has, you know, a newer style can opener. So what they had to do, they had to move the nail nick to the middle. And yeah, and also I noticed the blade stock on the bandit is much thicker. And 
then on the trail hand Yeah, and the last thing I'll show on the Bandit is it has a completely different awl than the trail hand. So both made by Camillus, both made with under the Remington name, but two very different construction techniques. They also have another, another six-bladed camp knife with bolsters that has this same style awl. I don't know if that's called the trail hand or or what. I, run, I really don't know a lot about these Remington knives. And if you guys could point me into the into a good direction of where I could research this and find out more, it'd be greatly appreciated. So yeah, I mean, the ones down here, I, I mentioned that I got a second uh, Zebu Horn uh, Sportmaster Manufactum Exclusive. And yeah, the other ones you guys have seen, and the video's getting a little long, so I'll cut it off there, but I just wanted to pop on and show you uh, where the Sportmesser, the Humpback collection is going. I hope you enjoy the video, and have a great day. Bye-bye.